less than six minutes until first serve in the national championship duel between Florida State and UCLA. It's time now to meet the starting lineups for the Seminoles and the Bruins. I'm Vanessa Frady, a member of the FSU Beach Volleyball team, and I'm here to introduce you to your starting Knowles. Coming in at the number five position is freshman number 33, Madison Fitzpatrick, the happiest and most gullible person on the team. And her partner, sophomore number 32, Francesca Gonsalves, whose first documentary will probably be about being vegan. Now at our number four position is sophomore Molly McBain. Some may call her the silent assassin. Her partner is junior Brooke Coleman. If you see her smiling while passing a ball, it's probably because she's thinking about dogs. Coming in at the number three position, and most likely to be caught eating candy and watching Disney movies, junior Macy Jerger. Redshirt sophomore number three, Sarah Putt. Punctuality is not her strength, but dietetics is. At the number two position, we have our great grandmas. Haley Luke, number 34 and a super senior, will most likely be on a baking show shortly after the national championship. Look for her partner and best friend, super senior number 35, Katie Horton, to be playing professional indoor volleyball next season. At the number one spot, we have the Brazilian duo of seniors number 25, Tori Paranagua, and myself, number 12, Vanessa Frady. Hi, my name is Sarah Sponsel, and this is my pair partner, Lily Justine, and we go to UCLA. And we love The Office. Pair number one is Nicole McNamara and Megan McNamara. And they cannot dance, but, but it's okay. We're gonna help them. We're gonna help them out. <laughs> pair number three, we got Savvy Simo and Zana Muno. They're team ADHD. I mean, they're a little spastic, but they get it together. We still love them. And pair number four, we got Elise Zapia and Mackenzie May. Mackenzie May, we call her corn because she's actually from Iowa and we just think she lives she's in the corn giant field. Giant stock of corn. And Elise Zapia, she might be younger than me, but we still call her the grandma because she's been with UCLA for like 50 years probably. Uh, pair number five, we got Megan Murray and Izzy Carey. They're a little pale, so we call them Team Sunscreen. They gotta keep reapplying every five minutes, but that's all right, we still love them. Awesome, those are the starting lineups for our NCAA championship. And we wanna watch the fours starting early on, Holly. We're definitely gonna focus on the fours. Florida State able to get a, a three set victory against Mac May and Elise Zapia just yesterday. So that's an interesting matchup. UCLA might have to change their game plan. Let's check in with Sam Gore and Cameron Irwin. They will be watching the fives for us. That's right, guys. And one big change for the fives, Cameron, is the fact that they're going to be on a different court than what they've played on the entire week. How can that impact things? Well, both the fours and the fives are now adjusting to interior courts where the wind is a little less of a factor. The wind has also made an adjustment from yesterday to today. We're seeing more of an offshore wind, so it's going the opposite direction. I think UCLA may have a bit of an advantage as they've already played one match today. You mentioned, though, that these two teams have already faced each other in the past. This competition, how do you expect them to compete against each other today? Well, for the fives, this is going to be a fun rematch from earlier in this competition. I love the play of UCLA. They're smooth, not super physical, but they're a ball control team. But this team from Florida State, they only have about a handful of matches in their belt. But guess what? They've gone 3-0 so far in this tournament. One thing we're all wondering is whether fatigue will be a factor for UCLA. And with more on that, let's go to Holly Road. Well, Sam, that is a great question. And here's why UCLA has had to fight back into this championship duel through the elimination bracket. That means they have played two extra duels in this grouping and that means about three and a half hours more out here in these conditions on the sand they've been playing since about 10 30 this morning they've been out here warming up and just a short break in between matches i asked their athletic trainer what they did she said we hydrated each each athlete has a little bit different need to get ready to go here. But I did see Florida State come out and work out earlier. They did a lot of activation exercises because now they've been sitting around all day. So will it be fatigue that plays a factor or will it be that UCLA has already been out here scratching and clawing and they're ready to rock? It's a very interesting dynamic to our duel today. And yeah, we'll see how both of these teams come out with so much on the line. Series history between Florida State and UCLA the Seminoles leading the all-time series seven to four, but they have gone one and two this season. That one win was on Friday here at the NCAA championship. Yeah, totally different matchups this time around from when they played on the West Coast, and it really worked to Florida State's advantage. Very deep five pairings. Remember, the championship duel is set up a little bit differently, but this is more normal 
for these teams is this is how they play during the regular season. The fours and fives will go first. We will see the fours playing on court one. The fives will be playing on court three. After both of these matches have concluded, we will see the one, two, and three pairs take the sand. But we will be starting on court one with the four pairs. Brooke Kuhlman and Molly McBain for Florida State taking on Mac May and Elise Zappia for UCLA. UCLA actually lost to this team two straight sets just two days ago. So Florida State with the advantage, but this team of Mac May, Elise Zappia can get on a roll. Big blocker at the net, very solid defender, and Elise Zappia behind. Elise Zappia will have the first serve here at the fours as the national championship duel is underway here in Gulf Shores. First point going to Florida State off the hand of Molly McBain. Yesterday, this Florida State pair went after Mac May and they played a game of cat and mouse defensively, always mixing up their block signals and really keeping her guessing. And an ace for Brooke Coleman. Right from the start, Brooke Coleman goes aggressive jump serve. Looks like they're going after Zappi unless that was just an aggressive serve. to back aces. The Bruins didn't even take a step. They need to communicate on that and at least somebody move towards that ball. Florida State jumping out to a three nothing lead here in the first set. We will play to 21. You have to win by two in the first two sets. Swing coming from Molly McBain, but Mac May at the net, and that is the first point for UCLA. And there you see the benefit of having somebody six foot three at the net. This Florida State team is really scrappy. They like to pull off the net and play defense and take teams out of system with an aggressive serve. Mac May back to serve. She also plays indoor for UCLA, just a freshman, but was named to the Pac-12 all-freshman team on the indoor side and the beach side. According to Jeff Alzini, the assistant coach for the Bruins, he talks about Mac May being a great learner, really receptive. She hasn't spent too much time in the sand, but she responds to the coaching and the tips that they give her. Beautiful shot from Elise Zappia. Zappia and May 21 and five overall this season at the fours for UCLA. Elise Zappia is the only senior on this UCLA team. Bruins looking to go aggressive from the line, but back-to-back -back service errors, I mean, that's a rough start. Florida State has come out really strong. Keep in mind, UCLA just played an hour ago. This is the first duel of the day for Florida State. Beautiful block move by Molly McBain. She shows kind of that she might be going angle and then jumps into the line last second and Mac May bites on that. She, Mac May has got the reach. She needs to keep her offense high and clear that block. Brooke Coleman trying to be aggressive on the serve. It goes wide, point for the Bruins. Here comes Kuhlman at the net. Brooke Kuhlman played at ones for Florida State last year, and now she's on the four play. Started a little inconsistent on the season, but she is experienced. She played at the highest level and has fantastic court vision for the Seminoles. She was an AVCA All-American last season, went 17 and 11 on court one for FSU. Mac May with the attack. It'll be McBain on the other side for Florida State. How about that, Mac May? No chance for FSU to do anything with that. UCLA finally able to scrap on defense and make things happen on that overdig. Mac May takes advantage. Coolman past the block, saved by the Bruins. Here comes Zappia. Mac May again, back-to-back -back points. 
Good transition play, setting up Mac May on two for the easy kill. Mac May was the Iowa Gatorade Player of the Year as a senior, a three-sport athlete in high school. Also participated in track and field and soccer. And now they're gonna have the down official come over. Not sure what she's arguing. Either way, it goes in favor of the Bruins. UCLA down by two here in this opening set on court one. These are the fours. The fours and fives playing first today. Beautiful court vision and a nice set by McBain. Kuhlman goes over line. Molly McBain now serving at Mac May. Here she comes. A point for the freshman. Let's check in with Holly. Well, I just love watching Elise Zappi of UCLA, number 34. She is just one of the smaller players out here, but one of the biggest personalities. She has got impeccable training in a discipline that's very unusual for a volleyballer, a black belt in karate. She got the black belt when she was just about 10 years old. It has helped her so much with her mental training, her balance, her ability to execute things. But what I love is I see her leadership is she is this small little bulldog helping Mac May in moments of crisis and talking to her like we see right there, just lifting her up, a very mentally strong competitor. And hey, I don't know any other black belts out on the sand. Holly McBeat, maybe you do. Well, Stein Metzger calls Elise Zappia the little engine that could. He loves her fire and her tenacity. You mentioned, Holly, the only senior on this UCLA team working with a freshman, and it's so invaluable to have that leadership on the sand for Mac May. McBain to the back corner. McBain and Coleman are always moving their offense, and they're so coordinated in those movements. Because the wind is now offshore, they're constantly running those back sets, working with the wind, not against it. May with one in front of her answers with another point. Mac May has the length at the net, and staying aggressive is a much better strategy against this smaller, really quick defensive team. Playing to 21, you have to win by two in the first two sets. Another point for McBain. McBain just seeing what's open and taking it. They run a low set, Florida State, which enables the player to keep an eye on the defense. McBain and Coleman, 14 and three this season on court four. McBain looking for the angle, gets a piece of that block. Florida State really taking advantage side to side. Mac May staying up at the net and they're just working Elise Zappia going where she isn't. The wind has really seemed to die down. Court one is protected by the grandstands between it and the water. Another aggressive swing by Mac May. I'm sure the UCLA coach, coaching staff telling her to use her size advantage. Stay aggressive. Don't get into that shot game with this Florida State team. UCLA trailing 12 to 8. May with the serve here. McBain coming around. What a save by Zappia. The shot too high, and the point goes to UCLA. That ball just got away from Brooke Kuhlman's hand. She wanted to power it down and missed it. We will check in on the fives when we come back. A national championship on the line here in Gulf Shores. Four and fives pairs are playing first. We are playing flights in this championship duel. Right now, the fives, FSU leading 12 to nine on both courts. We will check back in on the fives when they come out of this timeout. But let's go back to the fours right now playing on court one. We do play to 21, have to win by two in the first two sets. There's Brooke Kuhlman with a point for the Knowles. 
Florida State moving side to side, covering that court well, just making it really impossible when there's open net to put that ball away. Let's head over to the fives now with Sam Gore and Cameron Irwin. Thanks, Courtney. Yeah, here at the fives, UCLA is getting back into this first set. Florida State won the first three points of the set and actually led 10 to five, but now 12 to nine, make it 13 nine. Florida State ahead. Florida State has really applied the pressure from the service line to start this off. They've gone between both Murray and Carey. A look at Francesca Gonsalves from Dallas, Texas. She's really into film. She was accepted and took a class at a prestigious film school in Paris last year. She actually edited the team's hype video. It's a fairly new pair for Florida State against Izzy Carey and Megan Murray. That goes out. Madison Fitzpatrick is Gonsalves' partner. She's a freshman from Tallahassee. I love the back set there, just kind of changing up the approach UCLA is taking for their offense early on. They kept it really simplified, just hitting from the exterior of the court. Izzy Carey, a junior from Westlake Village, put it in play. She's a Californian. And a nice off-speed shot there by, Gun by Fitzpatrick. Now this duo from Florida State has been unstoppable so far this tournament. They've gone 3-0, beating this pairing of Carey and Murray already once. Pretty and new pair as well. New pair, yeah. They came into this tournament only having played just a handful of matches together, but it does not appear like that. They are just unstoppable, both siding out at very high rates. It has clicked for Florida State's fives. 15 to 10, Florida State in front. We played a 21 win by two in the first two sets. Nice tactical swing there by Carey. That is a beautiful high line shot from Izzy Carey. Murray, her parents actually met playing beach volleyball. It's been her family her entire life. She's a Californian as well near San Diego. Into the open court, point Florida State. Florida State just on a roll. I would love to see Florida State win. Izzy Carey is pulling off the net, especially down the line. Megan Murray takes a really big step into the middle of the court. So there is a lot of area, a lot of court space in the cross court. Florida State unable to keep that in play, point UCLA. In beach volleyball in the first two sets, you change sides every seven points. Angela Rock doing the walk and talk with Florida State, a, a beach legend herself, a yeah, volunteer assistant on this staff. Angela Rock just has such an intense personality. I love watching her under the umbrella because she gives such raw and immediate feedback. Good up there by Carey. Point Florida State. I just mentioned Angela Rock, and with more on her, let's go to Holly Rowe. Well, she has such an impressive story. She was added to this coaching staff a little bit late this year. She's actually a full-time tenured professor at a school in California. She is flying cross-country on her weekends to come and help this team, and she has been such a huge asset to them. She's a brilliant mind, has written a book about beach volleyball. But what impressed me is she was out here at 11 o'clock this morning sitting there scouting every match for UCLA. She's been out here for hours making sure her athletes are completely prepared when they face the Bruins this afternoon. Brock was an Olympian. She's coached Olympians. She's been a big part of the development of this sport. 18-13, Florida State in front here in the opening set. So look at Megan Murray, the freshman. Murray, kind of an opposite personality of her partner, but that's what makes their chemistry work so well. This is a very tactical team. Coach Stein Metzger was telling us that they're intentional learners. He can bombard them with information and they don't tune them out. They just absorb it like sponges. Yes, he said they're the coach's dream and they're also just so disciplined in their play. Falls back on UCLA side, point Florida State. I also love the fact that they call them team sunscreen <laughs> because of their fair complexion. <laughs> 
Izzy Carey has actually done some playing for the Ireland national team. And her dad was a rugby player in Ireland for years. Point UCLA. Her brother Austin actually played rugby for Stanford. So rugby, big part in their family lineage. And wow, check out that swing from Murray. Murray has one of the prettiest wrists I have ever seen in the game. She can really move the ball around. Set point, Florida State. Gonsalves and Fitzpatrick with set point here at the fives. And you can see the smiles on their faces. They are really bringing a lot of fun, excited energy, as they should for the championship match. No doubt just in watching this match, Florida State is very fresh coming into this. Fatigue may be a factor overall today. And remember in the last match UCLA had in the last duel, the fours and fives finished first. So these pairs have actually had a little more time to rest. And I love that play from Carrie and Murray. They've scored multiple times on that. The back set just kind of confusing the defense of Fitzpatrick and Gon Gonsalves. We've got set point for Florida State at the fives. Courtney and Holly have set or almost set point at the fours. McBain and Kuhlman just two points away from taking the opening set with Zappia and May, but still set point over on court three. UCLA with the serve, set point Florida State. And the Seminoles take set number one at the fives. They now have set point on the fours as well. McBain and Kuhlman leading Zappia and May, 20 to 14. Mac May. Off of the block, it'll be a point for UCLA and they will switch sides. But this whole entire first set, Florida State has controlled the tempo, the rhythm of the match. They're running the offense they want to run. They're running the defense they want to run. I feel like UCLA just reacting. They're not dictating what's going on. We kind of saw that in the first meeting on Friday. Florida State was really able to dictate what was happening. Still set point for FSU. <laughs> And Molly McBain with the swing, giving the first set to Florida State. Now on both courts, the fours and the fives. In Florida State, great start right out of the box. Set two coming up for the fours and fives as we get closer to crowning a national champion. Great weather for this championship duel. 88 degrees here in Gulf Shores, Alabama. The wind very minimal on the two courts we're playing on right now. Fours and fives in action first. We're playing in flights today, and Florida State was able to take both sets on both courts. Yeah, impressive start for Florida State. One of the things I notice is they're really dictating their offense where they want to put the ball, running back sets, attacking on two, and that's been a distinct advantage for Florida State. Court one, the pair of Brooke Coleman, Molly McBain taking the first set, and let's check in with Holly. Well, I'm just listening into the UCA huddle, UCLA huddle right now to see what they've got to change here in this second set. Jeff Alzina, the assistant coach, really brought a lot of energy into that last timeout and said, look, you guys have got to go on the proactive and be more offensive. If you're going to sit back and react and be reactive to what Florida State's doing, you're probably going to lose. Can you be reactive? Both athletes looked at each other. Yes, yes. So they are trying to come out and set a tone here. They said it's 0-0. Zero, zero. That pass set's behind us. Get out here and start creating and dictating what you want. Exactly what we talked about. You could see it. It was obvious Florida State was really in control in that first set. Keep in mind, UCLA, this fours pair, they were not able to take a set from Florida State in the first meeting on Friday. Much better start for UCLA. You saw an aggressive serve and fantastic defense and a big swing by Zappio to get the first point of the second set. And there's another point for UCLA. The tables have turned. UCLA just picking up the energy, and it shows when you jump on your opponent right from the beginning of the set, it shows. Kuhlman at the net with Mac May waiting. The energy is up. They're being proactive. They're making things happen right now on the UCLA side of the net. 
Mac May with a great reach. She's an outside hitter on the indoor team. She's got some hops. This time, Florida State going over the block. Coleman, high line. Florida State finds an opening, but now UCLA with a little bit of a cushion, feeling a little bit more confident in the second set. We still play to 21 in this second set, win by two. Now Florida State feeling some pressure, going for it and missing their serve. Fours and fives are playing right now. If there's a certain court you want to see, we have all of them streaming live on the ESPN app. You can pick which court you want to watch as we hop around. Beautiful dig by Brooke Coleman. She's so disciplined defensively, gets her platform on the ball in nice transition swing for the kill. Molly McBain will go back to serve now. Florida State finding itself down by two. Zappia. Zappia again, and there was a touch called point for UCLA. Let's check in with Holly. Well, the theme that you can see all over the shirts, the head coach, Brooke Niles, wearing it across her chest all in. This Florida State team has found a way to make the athletes accountable to each other. She said everyone has to have this poker chip that says all in on it. Every time of day, they have to have it on them. The coaches check. And then before every single duel, they have to all put it in this coffee cup that Devin Holquist is holding to let them know that we are all in. We are committing to be accountable on this match. And they don't get it back unless they did their job and they were accountable. So the all-in theme working very physically, tactically, and emotionally for Florida State. And it's not just about winning, too. It's about giving everything you have for your team. That's what all-in means. Zapia on the attack, saved by Kuhlman, but the overpass ensues. What a dive, Mac May. Out, point for Florida State. That ball carried and Mac May did not get her feet to the ball to put that away. The jump is less important, just a reach with control to keep it in the court. But UCLA making a lot of defensive moves, touching way more balls than they did in the first set. They look a lot more aggressive in this second set. They came out in the first set and Florida State took control immediately. Florida State, considering they didn't have a match earlier today, really came out strong and aggressive. We were wondering how that was gonna work out. UCLA, would they come in having the advantage of warmed up and played already a duel? Or would, and would Florida State be flat? And I think Florida State proved it. They came out strong in both courts. Fours and fives playing right now. We are playing in flights. We will get to see one, two, and three after these two conclude. Look at Mac May go, just the freshman making some big noise with her swing. And that's the thing, when you're on the beach, you have to get your feet to the ball so you can use your maximum reach. There you see Mac May gets her feet to the ball and powers it down for UCLA. And then goes back and gets an ace. I feel like you get in that rhythm, you're in a better offensive rhythm, then good things start happening from the line. And then if you're Mac May, then your block starts improving. Eight to three UCLA, an amazing response here in Set two, that will be a service error. Point for the Knolls. The fives also responding. UCLA on top right now, three to eight over at the fives. Perfectly placed ball by Elise Zappia, the lone senior on this UCLA team, hitting that ball out of the middle too deep for the retreating blocker. Coolman. UCLA ran out of room. Zappia needs to lift that dig a little better so Mac May can get a hand on it and give her an opportunity to attack. The walk and talk, this is the only time besides timeouts that you can talk to your team. You can't coach them during play. Both Stein Metzger and Jeff Alzina on this court for Zappia and May. Head coach Brooke Niles over here for Brooke Coleman and Molly McBain. And there's another point for the FSU duo. 
That's the third ace for Brooke Kuhlman. She started the first set off with a couple aces. Able to get another one. May had to readjust and then pulled the shot wide. Well, that set came off the net, which is tough because if you're a hitter, you're trying to see what the defense is doing. And if the ball's coming behind you, it's hard to track and find open court. Florida State playing catch up here. They're within two. You can make it within one now. Brooke Coleman, what a serve. Florida State going on the aggressive. They're on the better side. Slight wind advantage. Brooke Coleman in the good corner and is going aggressive into the cross court. Mac May and Elise Zappi have switched sides. They'll still go at Mac May. And here she comes at the net with a blocker waiting. Mac May can go over the block, but that time challenging the block and Molly McBain all over it for Florida State. Zappia covers that ball and surprises May who can't lift it. Florida State has fought back to tie up this second set at nine. Much better decision by Mac May to avoid the block and just go high over it with the touch. It will be Mac May's serve for UCLA. Just a one point lead as they try to even up this match and force a third set. Kuhlman off of the defender. Brooke Kuhlman very aggressive. She pops off the ground very explosive. She's been part of the USA high performance program the last couple of years and you can see why very talented young athlete. Kuhlman a junior out of Jupiter, Florida. Her partner Molly McBain a sophomore out of Canada. Mac May accelerates her arm on that shot, able to get it to drop and just a one point difference. Let's check in on the fives with Sam and Cameron. We've had a bit of a roll reversal over here with the fives as Carrie and Murray have turned this second set around after dropping the first set. Yeah, Murray and Carrie doing a really nice job of attacking Gonsalves as she is retreating off the block. Wind has started to pick up a little bit as well on this court. They've had to adjust the lines several times. One thing we can educate our viewers on, Cameron, that may be new to the sport, the good side is when the wind is in your face. The bad side is when the wind is at your back. But this is a wind that's a little odd. Do you have a good <laughs> side or a bad side today? Yeah, it's more about being on the right side or the left side of, of each half of the court and kind of making those adjustments. And the wind is kind of picking up and dying down right now. It's pretty calm, so not too bad. Florida State trailing by five, winning the first set 21-17. One of the things that has really upped Carrie and Murray's game is they've they've adjusted their service pressure. Instead of just serving at Fitzpatrick the entire time, who's siding out very well, they varied it. So they're serving short, serving deep, and trying to get them out of system. When they're able to do that, that's when they're able to transition out for the point. But this Florida State team is red hot coming into this championship duel. They've won their last 21 duels. Their last loss, ironically, was to UCLA, but of course, they've already avenged that loss here this week. Yeah, well, and I think it's a really interesting matchup for UCLA and Florida State to be in this championship just based off the fact that Florida State has sent UCLA home back to back years from this tournament. UCLA came into the NCAA championship having won 30 straight duels and was the number one seed, still is, but the number one team in the country and got beaten by Florida State on day one. So they've had to work their way back to the championship through the elimination bracket and have a little more wear on their bodies than Florida State does. It is a hot day here in Gulf Shores, Alabama, but the national title's on the line. We'll see the ones, twos, and threes after the fours and fives finish. Great overhead dig from Carey. And a hammer there by Carey to keep UCLA way out in front. Check out this overhead dig. She gets outside, transitions, and an open net. 
Carrie's a very cerebral player. She loves the tactical part of volleyball, the adjustments that you have to make and trying to calculate the angles on the court. Whereas Murray is a little bit more of a free spirit. Well, and they've made a huge adjustment here in this second set. What a serve, a rocket down the line, the ace for Fitzpatrick. This Florida State team has the ability to come back. They trail by four right now. Florida State trying to pick up the point here at the fives. The level of play that Fitzpatrick has brought to this fives pairing for Florida State is just out of this world. She wasn't in the lineup since March 30th versus UCLA the last time they played until the championship tournament started. Fitzpatrick grew up in Tallahassee, went to the FSU team camp as a youngster and Always wanted to play at this school. Big Seminole fan. Good save. And a wise use of the angle by Murray. Oh, I love that shot from Murray. She's keeping her shoulders in the line. Check this out. Shoulders stay towards one direction, and then all of a sudden, her wrist and arm go the complete opposite, really getting that ball to spin back into that cut shot. Murray was a high school beach All-American last year. She's had a lot of international experience as well. Into the open court, point Florida State. Florida State also changing up their tactics. Early on, they were pushing this team short, deep, poking around the block, now taking big swings, which is very effective as Murray has now started to kind of sneak up and is expecting the shot ball. That's out, point Florida State. So Florida State has climbed back to within two points on this changeover. Cameron, in, in volleyball, do you change your tactics at all based on how much your opponent has played? Would Florida State come into this duel trying to extend rallies a little more or just play the way they've been playing? No, I think they just want to finish the point and play as cleanly as they can. Florida State has cut the deficit to three. Make it two. 16-14 UCLA, but Florida State is coming back. This is such a momentum-driven sport. Oh, That's but, out. But I love the idea. Again, they have been very successful. That is UCLA running that back set. This one just out of bounds. Look at that pursuit by Gonsalves. And Florida State is within one. Fitzpatrick is just all over that short line shot. And a net violation from Florida State gives UCLA up two. A good break there for UCLA to stop the Florida State run. UCLA trying to force a third set. The third set in beach volleyball is to 15, win by two. Little pokey down the line. Explain the pokey. Well, the pokey is your, what you use in order to get a ball to kind of change the different contact. Instead of a hard driven ball, you can't use the open part of your hand to move the ball around. So you have to kind of knuckle the ball. Just like that right there from Izzy Carey. Now it can be a very deceptive move because you can go short with it, you can go deep, and based off of your arm, it's really, really hard to tell where that ball's gonna go. UCLA desperately trying to force a third set here at the fives. Fours and fives in action right now. Ones through threes will play after. What a block! And the block from Carey. I love the discipline to stay there. Fitzpatrick and Gonzalez trying to run a little bit more of a back play here. You can see Fitzpatrick going around, but Izzy Carey just all over it. These teams are both making big time adjustments, trying to change up their tactics. This is just an absolute chess game. The Bruins have responded and are two points from forcing a third set. Point Florida State. 
you cannot give Fitzpatrick a serve in her lap because she has such great first touch and she is siding out so well. She's got to move her. She's blanketed this court, Cameron. She's everywhere. That is good. Perfectly placed by Carey. Fitzpatrick just a little late on her defensive move there. And it is set point UCLA to force a final set here at the fives. Out. They know they have to apply pressure to earn this last point. It remains set point for UCLA. And solve this to serve. Florida State saves another set point, one more to face. Now watch the serve receive of UCLA. Right now they're really going after Izzy Carey, but you can see Megan Murray is nearly in the middle of the court. That is out, and we are tied at 20. It will be match point or set point, depending on how this next one turns out. Your <laughs> Izzy Carey coming out of the middle of the court instead of from the exterior as she has been doing. What a rally and that ball is scored for UCLA. Oh my goodness, the net giving Murray just the extra hand that she needs. Oh. So it is set point again for the Bruins. I would change up. I wouldn't go at Fitzpatrick this time. Oh, what a get. Point Florida State. Fitzpatrick really finding that high line shot continually. If I'm UCLA, I mean, Megan Murray did a really nice job picking up that last one. She's starting to pick up that read. But I have a feeling Fitzpatrick is going to change very quickly here. So Florida State two points from securing the point here at the fives by winning this match. But UCLA two points from forcing a third set. It will be match point Florida State. And a timeout taken by UCLA. So while they're in a timeout here with match point, let's head back over, check out on the fours. Well, UCLA has just jumped ahead 19 to 16, but it's been really close up until this point. The Bruins trying to pull away. Yeah, the defense for UCLA has improved dramatically. They've been able to make some plays, get some passing errors from Florida State, take them out of system. That's not easy to do, but the last few plays have really enabled UCLA to go up by a few. Elise Zappia will now be serving UCLA two points away from forcing a third set at the fours. Way out of system for Florida State. Here comes Zappia. Again, McBain saves it. And now she'll swing. And it's punched over by McBain. That dick by Brooke Kuhlman to get that ball down the line in Molly McBain. Fast poke over the Mac May block. So impressive, digging deep when it counts. That brings Florida State within two of tying. We played a 21, you have to win by two. Mac May with one in front of her, and now it will be set point for UCLA. And now match point at the fives. Service error, 
And we're tied at 22. Oh, what a critical time. You cannot miss your serve at that point. Back Bay was at the net on the left side of your screen. It's set point for UCLA, but Florida State stays alive. We're tied at 22 at the fives. And now it'll be set point UCLA. UCLA coming with the tough serve, getting them just slightly out of system. Still set point for UCLA on the left side of your screen. Florida State responds again. Mac May is not being aggressive enough. She needs to go up and terminate, use her length at the net. And UCLA has just won the second set at the fives. We will play a third set, first of 15, win by two. We'll secure the point. Let's go back to the fours. Still set point here for UCLA. And there it is. A great response from Elise Zappia and Mac May at the fours. Well, the Bruins responded on both courts, and that was the key. We will see set three on both courts when we come back, getting closer to crowning a national champion. Still scoreless in this duel between Florida State and UCLA as we will crown a national champion here in Gulf Shores, Alabama. They have fought over two days of competition to get to this point. Fours and fives are playing right now. Sam Gore and Cameron Irwin are covering the fives for us. Holly McPeak and I are on the fours right now. Holly Rowe roaming the sidelines on the beach. We will see the fours and fives play. They're about to start the third set on both courts. After these two matches are done, we will see the ones, twos, and threes come on to play after a 12-minute break. Back over to the four pair now. Mac May and Elise Zappia were able to regroup an outstanding showing in that second set. It certainly was, but the third set is so important. It's important to come out aggressive. It's important to minimize errors and focus on what worked in that second set for UCLA to get that victory. And on the other hand, Florida State, when they're aggressive from the service line, they can really create points with their defense. The third set is a little bit different. We will only play to 15. You still have to win by two points and they will switch sides when the score adds up to a multiple of five. But it goes really fast when we hit that third set. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, I've just been listening in to the UCLA huddle. It's interesting because they've already played today. The coaches noticed that Mac May may not be going up as strong and as quick. You know, fatigue playing a little bit of a factor with the legs right now. So they gave her a technique to try instead. You don't have to be fast and big on the legs, but the arm has to be fast. So they use their arm like a cobra strike, like snap that wrist, get that ball down. The tempo still has to stay good. But then Elise Zappia looked at her teammate and said, look, this is why we got up at 5.30 every morning. We've been training. We are built for this moment. Her teammate, Matt May, looked at her and said, we've got this. We're going to win this. They found that renewed sense of energy in that second set. Can they hang on here to it? As Holly mentioned, UCLA had to play just over an hour ago. They had to take down Hawaii before they could get to the championship duel. In so much adrenaline in all of these matches with so much on the line, it's really exhausting. Mac May with the sharp snap of the wrist. And Mac May finally, she's getting her arm up, being a little bit more aggressive offensively. And I love the fire and leadership from Elise Zappia. Even at a point apiece here in the third set. And Brooke Kuhlman responds. Brooke Kuhlman is just not even phased by that big block in front of her. Turns this in between the line and the block for the kill. It'll be Molly McBain on the serve for Florida State. McBain attacking here, trying to get it past Mac May, but goes long. Molly McBain is really good at hitting that deep angle ball that time, not catching the back line. Yeah. 
McBain with nobody on and sends it into the net. A point for UCLA. This is the only the second match of the season for McBain and Coleman to go three sets. And the last time they did it, they were able to come out on top. McBain with the attack error gives that point up to UCLA. And now the Bruins lead by one after they've switched sides. Zapia with a blocker right there, not a problem. UCLA finally starting to touch balls defensively. Mac May needs to do a better job pushing that set up to the net to score a point. An ace for Mac May. Enough pop on the ball to catch the top of the tape and drop in UCLA's favor. Timeout. UCLA on top, five to two. We're only playing to 15, and the Bruins are fired up. Lots of UCLA fans. You see, that's part of the UCLA volleyball team supporting their other players. So both courts are at a timeout now as Zappia and May leading at the fours, five to two after dropping that first set. Well, the road to the Women's College World Series begins with a selection show. It's Sunday, May 13th at 10 p.m. Eastern on ESPN2. For more information on the NCAA Women's College World Series, visit NCAA.com, your home for all 90 NCAA championships. This is the newest NCAA championship, only the third year we saw Southern California take the first two national titles, but they were eliminated yesterday. A new winner this year, guaranteed. Right now, Florida State not happy with what's going on at the four pairs. Down by three, they wanted to stop things immediately with the timeout. The players for Florida State have ice bags on the back of their neck trying to cool down. Heat can be a factor out here. We are playing two flights today, meaning the fours and fives will play first. When they are done, there will be a 12 minute break. Then we will see pairs one, two, and three play. The first school to win three matches wins the duel and wins a national championship. There's a lot on the line and both of these teams match up really well. Let's check in with Holly. Well, guys, I just listened into the Florida State huddle and Brooke Niles, their head coach, telling them, look, we're just missing opportunities. It's there for us. She wants them to have better communication. She said when they're pulling, that shot is there. We just got to talk a little bit better when you're trying to communicate up at the net. And there goes Elise Zappia. What a shot. And what a rundown by Mac May. Finally puts her partner Elise Zappia right on top of the net. That's a high percentage set for Elise Zappia to kill. Takes care of it beautifully. McBain trying to respond off of the arms of Mac May. Mac May did a great decision choosing to drop off the net, but she needs to be stopped ready for that ball. When you drop off the net, hitters attack you all the time. It'll be Florida State serve. UCLA was not able to take a set from Florida State on the fours on Friday. And there is another point for the Seminoles with attack error. Aggressive serving by Brooke Kuhlman, putting pressure on the Bruins. That one was down the middle. Zappia made a decent pass, but they could not get a set close to the net. Brooke Kuhlman has brought her A game when it comes to the service line. Pokey by Coleman. Coleman with a great dig. She comes in, looks like she's going to hammer the angle, and that just freezes Zapia. Little poke shot down the line. Let's head over to the fives now. UCLA, a dramatic turnaround is up 10 to 3 here at the fives. Remember, we're playing to 15, win by two. It's now 10 to 4 after that point. And a huge reason why. 
UCLA has really turned it on. Megan Murray, just such a long and lengthy defender, has picked up her defense and not just digging the ball, but she's also transitioning. The winner of this will give their team the first point in the championship duel. In the third set, you change sides every five points. So a changeover happening right now with UCLA up 11 to four. And a great set from Murray to carry. They're doing exactly what Florida State did in the second set, which was kind of changing up their tempo, what their shots look like, making adjustments. Everything has gone UCLA's way here in this third set. Side out Florida State. However, nice shot there by Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick's first touch has gone a little bit awry here in this third set. And it's not that she's getting shanked, but it's more so that it's just not, the pass is not all the way up to the net. So the set is have, coming from an off the net position. Makes it a little bit tougher to take a look and a swing of the ball. It's got to go over. What a save. And UCLA closing in on the point, up 12 to five. Wow, what a layout. Check out that hustle from Izzy Carey. And then the long ball. You yeah, work, that was perfect. You work hard, you get the point. Service error, we've had a couple of service errors in this third set. Everybody trying to be aggressive. It's 12 to six UCLA. Gonsalves and Fitzpatrick running out of time. Great play from Gonzalez. Carrie had been doing just a quick little shoot shot over the top of her block. That time, Gonzalez taking a late block move to pick up that for the transition point. 12-7 UCLA. Thirteen seven UCLA is two points away. And another change of sides. Angela Rock with the walk and talk with the Seminoles trying to get them fired up and figure out a way to come back here. Over at the fours, it's tied at 10 apiece. We are rapidly going to be determining the first two points of this championship duel. Good. It seems like every ball off the net this set has gone UCLA's way, and it is match point Bruins. Murray again, her cutty is just so pretty, especially from that left side of the court. Match point saved, but a multitude for UCLA. UCLA has secured the first point in the duel as Carrie and Murray win their match at the fives. Carrie just doing a nice job. She really was so successful, that short shot over the block. I mean, such a team cerebral play right there from UCLA's five pair. So UCLA leads for now. Let's see if they can hold the lead and go back to the fours. Courtney? Well, Florida State is looking to even up this duel. They are leading here in set three at the fours, 12 to 10. It's McBain on the serve. And here comes Mac May. That ball did not clear the net. Back-to-back -back blocks, basically, for Brooke Kuhlman, and she had a dig transition play prior to that. Florida State just two points away from evening up this duel. Can the fours get it done? We saw a great response from UCLA in the second set. They've got to find that energy. Well, it was tied at 10-10, and then Brooke Coleman and Molly McBain made three big plays, and UCLA made some errors, and that was the difference. Now you've got that 13-10 advantage to Florida State. One point is already on the board in this national championship duel between UCLA and Florida State. The first school to three points wins the national championship. 
Right now, the fours, the only ones in action. Florida State leading by three points, just two points away from putting a point on the board. UCLA coaches right now, I'm guessing, talking about the offense and how are they going to side out against this aggressive team when the player on the right side for UCLA is hitting, the ball is blowing away from them, and that's why they're making those hitting errors. So possibly running a back set would work to their advantage. UCLA trying to stay loose. The ones, twos, and threes will hit the court next. Let's check in with Holly. Well, Holly McPeak, you are all over it. I'm just listening into that UCLA huddle, and that's exactly what the conversation was. Just to get a side out. He's trying to get this pair to think simply right now. We just need a side out. But he said, then if we do, the wind is in our favor. They're on a good side right now, and they feel very comfortable about their, about their ability to go after them and attack them on the serve. So side out, just keep it simple. Bruins cheering on their teammates. It's Molly McBain with the serve. Florida State needs two points. Mac May, too long. Match point right now for the fours of Florida State. May keeps this rally, this match alive. They will switch sides. UCLA has the opportunity to be aggressive from the service line and make things happen. Both players for Florida State have been so steady on side out. It'll be the freshman Mac May serving. Still match point for Florida State. The block was waiting, the point going to UCLA as they call a lift on Florida State. Mac May hanging, using that long reach, throwing it down for a UCLA point. Florida State does not have any timeouts left. They thought about calling one, but they've already used it. Still match point for the Knowles. McBain. Puts it down, and Florida State has just evened this duel. This is when it gets exciting, going into that next flight all tied up. We will see the ones, twos, and threes come onto the sand in about 12 minutes. But after the fours and fives have played, it is even at one point apiece in the national championship. I was impressed by the back and forth, the strategy changes by the Bruins in both second sets, but they were not able on court four to finish in the third. Holly Rowe is standing by with Brooke Niles. Well, Brooke, it is now 1-1. This is a different format today. All five pair were playing before, but now it's got a different feel. Is how do you approach this aggressively and strategically? I mean, our fours did a great job. Our fives was really close. We didn't want to go into the next round 0-2. So we wanted to get at least one of these two. It would have been awesome. But we knew this team would play us tough, and it's hard to beat a team twice in a tournament. But we are ready to go. You see the fire in their eyes, Holly? I see it. We're ready. I do see it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Florida State evens it up thanks to their fours. When we come back, we will get to see the ones, twos, and threes as the national championship duel continues from Gulf Shores. All tied up in the national championship, a point apiece for Florida State and UCLA. We are just minutes away from getting to see the second flight in this duel, we will get to see the ones, twos, and threes battle. And remember, you can see all courts streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, for the ones, for UCLA, they are a very unique pair. They are sisters, and not only are they sisters, but they're identical twins. I describe them as being relentless. They just don't quit on anything. And they hold each other accountable, which in a way that only sisters can do. We haven't actually gotten the blood test, but I'm worth thinking we're identical. I'm left-handed and she's right-handed, which really helps us out on the court. 
our family travels to Puerto Vallarta, Mexico every year, so our parents play on the court just for fun. We'd always sit on the side and like shag balls, and then when we kind of got older, closer to 10, we started bumping back and forth. So it, we fell in love with the sport from that moment and just lo had so much fun when we went back to Vancouver. Megan really fires Nicole up, and Nicole is really like thinking things through. I think they balance each other out so well. You need a Megan and you need a Nicole to have that great chemistry on the court. We were told, okay, you guys are short for the sport, so we knew that we'd always have to make up for it in other ways. So it's really intimidating getting out there and playing against like the 6'4", 6'5", girls, but, so, but we just know that we need to be quicker, more dynamic by having really tough serves and just making strategic, smart decisions on defense. Sometimes we talk about them being two bodies, one mind. They don't really need to communicate. They'll say like, yep, and no one else will know what that means, but they all know like, okay, I'm gonna set a white to the pin this play. It's like a dance, you know? It's a beautiful thing to watch. They know where each other is on the court without even hearing their voices or looking to see who they are. Unlike a lot of these partnerships, we have played together since we were 12, 13 years old. We've been a beach volleyball team, so we've really not only grown as individual players, but we've been able to grow and develop as a team, which really helps us out. The McNamara Twins hail from Vancouver, Canada. Just juniors, only 5'9", but they have been able to compensate for that by being outstanding across the board. They're extremely motivated. They're, their eye is on 2024 for Canada. They have the Olympics in mind, so they're constantly pushing their level. Let's check in with Holly Rowe. Well, guys, I've just been listening in to Stein Metzger as he speaks to his team, Justine. Uh, Lily and Sarah Sponsel here on court number two and one of the biggest things that he said to them was I need your breath in your stomach. He's really been talking to them about their mindset, staying together, having unity as a team, very calming words to this group. You know, it's interesting to see how coaches speak to different pairs. For some, they're trying to fire them up. For others, they're trying to center them and calm them down. Very calm words, breath in your stomach, control that breath. They were the pair that clinched the win and clinched the spot in this championship duel. We will check back in with them, but let's start on court one now. Just a few seconds away from the first serve of the second flight. This duel is even at one point apiece. The first school to three wins the we national championship. It will be Vanessa Freyti and Tori Paranagua taking on the McNamara Twins on court one. Freyti back to serve first and the second flight underway. Swing coming, Paranagua there. Tori Paranagua, the senior captain. Big block to start it off. Florida State trying to serve aggressive and use their size advantage at the net. This Florida State duo are the team captains for the Seminoles. They were named to the CCSA All-Conference team. And there's a response from the McNamaras. Megan McNamara staying aggressive. Really important. You don't want to get tentative against a big block. You want to go after them aggressive and attack. Aranagua tight at the net, and Freyti takes the swing. Nicole McNamara on the shot and the kill. Nicole number 13, Megan number 31. Megan is at the net and she's so good at retreating off the net and becoming part of the defense. They move so well together as partners. Freighty puts it away. The McNamaras are 35 and seven overall as the ones, the Pac-12 pair of the year. And Nicole was named the Pac-12 player of the year. Beautiful change of direction by Nicole McNamara, the lefty of the two, saving that tight ball. This is Megan back to serve. Freyti sets up Paranagua. Just enough to get it past the touch of Tori Paranagua. One of the things that makes America special is their transition setting. They put up hittable balls 
every time, no matter where the first contact goes. Stein Metzger says they really changed the program as soon as they hit the beach at UCLA. They never take a playoff so serious about their game. This Florida State pair, both captains, Vanessa Frady and Tori Paranagua actually went to Brazil in 2016 for the Olympics to watch Brooke Niles' husband, Nick Lucena, compete, compete, and they were just so inspired and fired up to support him. And here he is today supporting them. They lost their first four sets in this tournament, but were able to take two from Hawaii to punch their ticket to the championship duel. That ball set way off the net, but Megan McNamara finds that deep line open. Nicole's serve into the net. She has such a strong serve, too. It's rare to see it go into the net. Megan going high line over that block. I asked the McNamara's what they did to fuel themselves on a day like this, and they said 80% water, 20% almond butter. They like to stay light and quick and hydrated. Pokey over by Paranagua. Now nobody on, but the swing wide and out. Beautiful pickup by Megan McNamara, turning that ball just wide, but she's had a couple kills down that same line deep. We played a 21 in the first two sets. You have to win by two. Look at Florida State go. Number 12, Vanessa Freddy has really improved her defense. She's been a full-time blocker for Florida State, now splitting with Tori Paranagua and her defensive reads are really impressive. This Florida State duo, both Brazilian, sometimes they speak Portuguese to each other. That shot hit the antenna, point for UCLA. But the read was there, Vanessa Freddy in the right location, just could not control it. Great dig by Frady, and now she attacks. Goes off of the platform of Megan McNamara. You don't see a ball control error like that very often from the McNamaras. They are so solid with their ball control. I love the communication between them two. I mean, sometimes they don't really need to say much. They just know what the other one is thinking. But they're constantly talking. They always lock eyes. They always communicate after every play and check in with each other. Come on. Come on. Nicole puts it away. Tori Paranagua there just a little bit late with her press, and Nicole McNamara's got a quick arm down the line. This will be Megan McNamara back to serve. UCLA on top here in this first set. The duel is even at one apiece, and an attacking error by, error by Paranagua. Florida State needs to push that ball tight to the net. That's where they have the advantage. If they're off the net, much more difficult to put the ball away. Great dig by Megan McNamara. But it never goes over, and the point goes to Florida State. I thought it was interesting in warm-ups that they said the McNamara's can't dance because when they move around the court, it is beautiful to watch. Freighty going right at Megan McNamara. Check out Nicole McNamara working at the net. But that ball went wide. That's a break for Florida State. And credit Vanessa Freighty for running down that first ball. If you can extend the rally, that gives your team a chance to score the point. Tied up now at nine in the first set. That one will secure the point. Megan hammers it down the line. Lots of pace on that ball. 
Remember, we have three courts going right now. You can see all three streaming live on the ESPN app. You can pick which court you want to watch on your second screen. Stay with us as we hop around. That's a good set tight to the net where Tori Paranagua can work her offense. Knotted at 10 with Paranagua back to serve for Florida State. Great save, what a hustle by the Knowles. Just not enough on the swing from Megan McNamara. The point goes to Florida State. On court one, Florida State leading in this first set. This duel is tied at a point apiece. National championship duel between Florida State and UCLA even at a point apiece. Ones, twos, and threes in action right now, and you can see all three courts streaming live on the ESPN app. Let's check in over at court three now and get an update from Sam Gore and Cameron Irwin. Thanks, Courtney. We're at the technical timeout, which is a timeout they take when the score gets to 21 points in beach volleyball. There's a look at the UCLA duo of Zanamuno and Savvy Simo at the threes as they are taking on a team that had not lost until the NCAA championship this year. Sarah Putt and Macy Jerger for Florida State. Now it's been an interesting matchup so far. Uh, Savvy Simo and Zana Muno, guess what they're called? What? Team Wounded Bear. <laughs> Head coach Stein Metzger says this team plays even better when they're both injured and both of these girls have been battling throughout the season with some injuries and it looked as if just on that last play uh, Savvy Simo may have been a little injured a little bit of pain she is so tough though I, I guarantee she's gonna battle through this I actually watched once uh, Zana Muno get a little banged up and next thing you know, it's in. she was playing against Cal Poly. I mean, she just fought through. I cannot believe the fight of these two student athletes. They ended up winning that match as well. Let's go down to Holly Rowe and see if she was able to pick up anything during that timeout. You guys, I went and sat right by Savvy Simo during that last timeout. She did put a cold towel around her neck, her back, trickle water into her scalp. I got the impression that she seems to be okay, but she's more heated than anything right now. So she was not seen to by the athletic trainer, and, and she seemed like she's doing okay out there right now but this is an interesting pair as you said team wounded bear you see the huge knee brace on the left knee of Zana Muno they've been a little quiet about what the actual injury is but she was out for five duels she was out for almost a month just came back right now and she is really crafty how she plays around that clunky knee brace I can't imagine trying to move with that in the sand but they uh, team wounded bear rallying right now well and that's a great point Holly that knee brace on Zana Muno. I mean, if I'm playing against her, I'm gonna try and make her move. See how mobile she is. That's a, a pretty big limp she has going back to serve here. But Stein Metzger says they're actually better when he thinks they're a little banged up. That's where that wounded bear comes from. You know how dangerous a bear is when they're wounded. And so he feels like if this team's healthy <laughs> they're actually not playing their best well these are two just such fun student athletes i mean they love the drama of this sport they love the drama of playing to the third set and i think the woundedness of them just makes them that much more exciting you know comes from an athletic family her mom kimberly was a former golfer her dad played college football her brother is a baseball player one of her cousins plays for the new york mets Oh, I love that eye work from, you know, though, you can see her drop her eyes in the, the middle of her approach, trying to take a look at what the defense of Florida State is doing. 14-12 UCLA in front. Both these teams have shared the lead in this opening set. It's been back and forth. It wasn't until seven to six that Florida State had a lead. And then they held on to it for a while and now UCLA has gotten it back. Been a very competitive match so far. Point Florida State. Swing off that right side by Macy Jerger, a junior from Fort Myers, Florida. Jerger is the CCSA Scholar Athlete of the Year, two years running now. She has a 3.8 GPA in biology. Ace. 
I love that middle serve. It's so hard to pick that serve up. It's, you, it takes a ton of communication. You can see UCLA just letting that one fall right in the middle of them. Seeing a lot of service errors on this court today. There's an ace. Ty Sings at 14. Jerger, uh, Florida State does a lot of team chemistry games, and some of them put you under a tremendous amount of pressure with your teammates depending on you. And Jerger, more often than not, wins most of those games. She is excellent under pressure. Look at that save. Oh my goodness, and just a rip from Zana Muno into the cross court. Wow, check out that dig though. Put a radar gun on that. UCLA up two now. We played a 21 win by two in the first set. The overall championship duel between UCLA and Florida State is tied at a point apiece. You have to win three matches to win the duel. We've got pairs one, two, and three trying to determine who's going to be our national champion at the moment. This is the threes. Head coach Brooke Niles says this threes pair gives her gray hair. <laughs> they are just constantly having fun, running around the court. They have to keep each other accountable. Especially the lefty putt. She's a, a free spirit. Sophomore from Jupiter, Florida, point UCLA. They're going after Savvy Simo. Savvy, a very, very talented attacker. She has one of the heaviest arms out here on the sand. She reached back and found the inside of the line. Can you believe that went in? Oh my goodness. I mean, you want to attack the exterior of the court as much as you possibly can. Check out this transition though, too. Just getting her feet right underneath of her and finding the lines. UCLA up one. Remember, we're going to 21 win by two to win the first set. Point UCLA, 18-16. Muno again, just so good off that first touch. You can see once they pass, what they do after they pass. That's going to tell you if they're in system or not a lot of the time. So if they're making a simple move, ball is straight in front of them, then that's in system. They're able to do a lot with that ball if they get a good set. That is absolutely perfect. 18-17 as they change sides. It's been tough for either of these teams to distance themselves. Brooke Niles with this team that she says gives her the gray hairs. Brooke actually came to Gulf Shores when we talked to her on our opening day meeting with the coaches. She had lost her voice. We heard about her struggles last year when she was pregnant. There's just something about Gulf Shores that has not been good for Brooke Niles, but a national championship would certainly go a long way in changing that. 19-17 UCLA. Look for UCLA to go at Jerger with a service pressure. Nineteen eighteen. And Jerger delivers. I love that. She passes the ball more towards the middle. She shifts her approach in and then is able to open up the court a little bit. It's really hard to attack out of the middle. It makes defense very difficult finding at, extra space. At the twos, UCLA has a set point, but they're on a timeout. We'll get over there in just a second. We may have a set point here at the end of this rally, depending on who wins it. And we will set point UCLA 20 to 18. And you can see this UCLA pair just catching their breath after that rally. This is a pair that does a lot of split blocking. So they both share blocking duties. Again, the Florida State team of Putt and Jurger, they had only lost one match coming into the championship. Hawaii beat them here. It's been their only loss of the season and they're still alive. After that swing 
by the lefty putt. UCLA had found a lot of success with the Zana up at the net. She was doing a lot of late blocking moves, able to pick up a lot of shots that were coming her direction. Still set point, UCLA. That serve is out, and UCLA has just claimed the opening set at the threes. Let's go back over to court two and see how things end there. Well, Lily Justine and Sarah Sponsel have set point against Haley Luke and Katie Horton. They're just coming out of a break. It'll be Sponsel back to serve for UCLA and set point. Luke with the shot places it perfectly. Luke and Horton have been a solid pair for Florida State. Beat USC, beat Hawaii, did not finish against UCLA last time these two teams met. UCLA has set point on courts one and two. Court one on the right side of your screen. It's Nicole McNamara serving. And set point there on court two for UCLA on the left side of your screen. From court number two, UCLA is set one. Over we'll take you over to court one, one now. Still set point for UCLA. Florida State serving Paranagua. Here comes Megan McNamara. Paranagua with the block in her face. And Florida State now ties it at 20. This Florida State pair staying on Megan McNamara, running some good balls down, and then Tori Paranaga with a little drop shot towards the line. All tied up. You do have to win by two. Tough serve, but the McNamara's handle it and turn it into a UCLA point. Megan McNamara, no doubt about it, stays very aggressive on that last swing. Set point for UCLA. Looking to take the first set on courts one, two, and three. Great dig by Megan McNamara, and now she puts it away. UCLA takes the first set on courts one, two, and three. No relaxing against the McNamara's. Duel is still even at one point apiece. We go to set two when we come back. Tied up at a point apiece in this national championship duel between Florida State and UCLA. Both of these programs looking for their very first NCAA Beach Volleyball National Championships. Florida State has been in this situation before. Two seasons ago, they were knocked out in the championship duel by USC, but this is the first appearance for UCLA. All three courts in action, streaming live on the ESPN app, but let's get you over to court two right now. UCLA was able to take the first set on all three courts. And that's a good start for UCLA because Florida State came out really aggressive. Lily Justine and Sarah Sponsel for UCLA battling Haley Luke and Katie Horton. This UCLA duo just had to fight to the finish. They were the ones that secured the win in the elimination duel just a couple of hours ago to make it to the championship. But this UCLA pair has not had the best tournament. That was a big win for them and they needed that. But prior to that, they had not sealed the point for UCLA, except for at LSU. Point drops in from Katie Horton. Katie Horton and Haley look to Florida State indoor standouts and here they are full time on the beach for this year and it shows in the level of play dramatically improved from last year and yeah, we heard their teammates call them super seniors the second duel will go to 21 you have to win by two if ucla wins this second set they put a point up on the board in this duel Three courts in action right now. We already saw the fours and fives split. Ones, twos, and threes going right now. 
UCLA sends it to Horton, and here comes Katie Horton on the attack. That time, Katie Horton in transition with the block. It's interesting because most teams have been serving Haley Luke. Katie Horton was a six rotation outside hitter indoors and very comfortable passing and hitting every ball. And she was the first at Florida State with 1,000 kills and 1,000 digs. Started her career at Ohio and then played three years indoor for FSU. All-American on the indoor side. Watch this back tricky hand set by Sarah Sponsel. Almost missed it, clipped the top of the net. You want to finish that move if you're going to back set it over the net so it doesn't hit net and is clean over the tape. Shot is long, point for UCLA. That time, UCLA going after Haley Luke. She was an indoor setter, less comfortable taking every pass, but this is a tough Florida State to get out of system. UCLA up by two here in the second set. Haley Luke takes a piece of that block with her. Haley Luke's mom introduced her to volleyball. Her mother was an, a Hall of Fame volleyball player at Nebraska at Kearney. And Haley Luke gets the point with her serve. Let's check in with Holly. Well, you guys were just talking about that savvy set that we saw from Sarah Sponsel that just trickled along the tape and then dropped in. Her coach, Stein Metzger, says she is the best setter, hands down, man or woman, that he's ever seen. Now, consider what he's seen. A three-time national champion on the AVP Tour for 16 years. So the highest compliment for Sarah Sponsel about how good her hands are, how smart she is with how she's able to use that set. You see no rotation on that ball. Just comes out nice and clean out of her hands. It's a lot of fun to watch in person, too. I went over to watch them on court, too, on Friday, just so I could see her set. UCLA up 8-6. to six. They will switch sides. Bruins looking for back-to-back -back set wins to put a point up on the board in this national championship. Lily Justine out of Chico, California would drive on weekends and train with the Santa Cruz Beach Volleyball Club to get her reps in, but really learned most of her beach volleyball here at UCLA. Justine, just a sophomore. That shot goes long. Another point for the Bruins. Tough serve of Justine getting a little tweak in the pass, making Luke uncomfortable in serve receive. Sponsel laying out for it. That can't get it back. That time Katie Horton just stepped up, took that second ball, turned it to the open court. Brooke Niles told us this is a duo that really doesn't get rattled if they're down. Sometimes they just kind of let them be on their own because they're so confident in what Haley Luke and Katie Horton can do. Beautiful setup for Lily Justine. It's interesting, Florida State going at Lily Justine, who if she passes the ball, we know she's going to get a sweet set. And you see she's able to use her physicality to attack that ball. Here comes Luke going for the cross court angle and just gets enough of it in. Pretty cut shot. Six foot Haley Luke able to get that ball to drop inside of Sponsel. Spent most of last season on court five for Florida State, went 22 and eight. Justine hustling after it. Still somehow Sarah Sponsel is able to get a swing off. Sarah Sponsel so athletic. Broken play basically way off the net, but a good fast swing down the line. Better to get that ball up and make something of it than let that, that middle ball drop. Pushed over by Horton. Blocked by Horton. Katie Horton is a four. She shut down a couple UCLA point opportunities with her block at the net. UCLA still on top, 11 to five. We are playing to 21. Have to win by two.
Lily Justine. Well, this duel is even at a point apiece. The ones, twos, and threes competing right now. We saw the fours and fives split in the first flight in this national championship duel between Florida State and UCLA. Both programs looking for their very first national championships. And this is something they have worked their entire careers for their entire career in both of these volleyball programs came in this season in the fall to their schools and, and really made the goal to come in here and win the title. Nothing less will do. Let's check back in on court one. They are in the second set with UCLA leading seven to five. McNamara twins took the first set 22 to 20. Megan McNamara puts it away. Megan McNamara has been getting most of the serves and she's been really aggressive with this cross court kill. It's a kind of a low set, but her arm is quick and she's able to get that ball down before the block cuts it off. Paranagua responding. Nice on two away from the defender, senior Tori Paranagua. Something that Angela Rock has really added to this program, Brooke Niles calls Angela Rock the secret weapon. She's really worked on the back setting, the over on twos, maximizing the offense. We, tur we heard Holly Rowe talking about Angela Rock's commute to work too. She flies from California to Tallahassee to be a volunteer assistant for this Florida State team. I would say that's all in. Yes, that is definitely all in. Just like it says on her shirt and Florida State has gotten behind that motto all season. Same play by Megan McNamara going hard into the angle. Tori Paranagua was a little bit late sliding her hands over the net. Paranagua and Vanessa Frady maybe want to switch roles and see if Vanessa Frady can get over the net a little quicker. And a service error at point for Florida State. Well, for those of you looking for Major League Baseball between the Dodgers and the Padres, you can find it over on ESPN2 until the conclusion of the NCAA Beach Volleyball Championship. Megan McNamara gets the corner. Let's send it over to court three. Thanks, Courtney. This has been a dominant performance by UCLA here in the second set. Simo and Muno up. They were up by 10 points. That has just been cut to nine, but they came out of the gate red hot, Cameron. Yeah, they're just playing really clean volleyball. Their first contact is very, very solid. So they're staying in system a lot. You see Zana Muno there again with a very solid pass. They have played with so much passion in this second set. Just a bit of frustration there from, you know, she knows she got a good pass. She should have scored on that play. They've had very little to be frustrated about here in this set. Florida State is in trouble. Remember, the duel is tied at one. And UCLA is getting very close to taking a 2-1 lead overall in this championship duel if they can hang on and win the threes. And there is the arm of Savvy Simo. I mean, she's so good, especially when she stays aggressive. Remember, UCLA has a little extra motivation of playing Florida State, the team that's knocked them out of the championship the last couple of years, and they've already lost once to the Seminoles. UCLA is the number one seed. They've been ranked number one in the nation most of the season. That's good. I mean, and this win would be huge just for this pairing as well as they lost to this exact same matchup of Florida State in two. Sarah Putt catching the back of the line. She was an All-American at Stetson University in the indoor game before coming out to play beach at Florida State. The one adjustment I have yet to see Florida State make, which I really feel like they should have, is Zada Muno continues to work down the line. So she's going deep and short over that line block. If I'm Florida State, I'm going to try maybe doing some late blocking moves, pulling into that line or into the angle, trying to switch it up. Also, kind of being a little more deceptive with the block, maybe jumping into the line or jumping back into the angle. 
Florida State is running out of time to make those adjustments. It is now match point UCLA. I mean, Team Wounded Bear is just getting after it. UCLA is one match win away from a national title as Simo and Muno have given the Bruins a 2-1 lead in this championship duel by winning their match at the threes. A huge pickup for this threes pair of UCLA. What a big win getting their team one step closer to that title. UCLA up 2-1. Let's go back over to court two. Courtney and Holly McPeak. Well, UCLA just jumped on top here in the second set, 16-15. Lily Justine and Sarah Sponsel trying to sweep, and they would give UCLA the title. Lily Justine sends it right back, and there's another point for the Bruins. Lily Justine doing a great job at the net for UCLA control, and anything tight she's getting her hands on. Look at this good touch, pops right up on top, and she attacks it immediately. UCLA only needs a win on court two or court one, and they win the national championship. Let's get you back over to court one where UCLA is on top, 12 to 10. Florida State's Vanessa Frady and Tori Paranagua. This is crunch time, down by two in this second must set win. Here comes Megan McNamara, just enough on it to lay down that point. Megan McNamara has established power in the angle, so the block dives there and she drops it short line. Really good strategy. Nicole with the serve here. Freyti will set up Paranagua. And the McNamaras are rolling. They certainly are the retreating blocker with a nice controlled pokey and transition kill. UCLA, their defense really makes them special. Paranagua puts it away. Don't forget, when we conclude here over on ESPN3, you can catch the 2018 NCAA Beach Volleyball Championship Trophy presentation immediately following this match that is over on ESPN3. It's long, a point for the Bruins. Florida State digging deep, trying to figure out a way to get back in this match. It's not easy, everything you do has to be perfect against this McNamara pair. Nicole, point. Vanessa Frady there to dig that ball, but that ball's deep passing over her and she can't control it. There is the twin magic that they talk about. Nicole McNamara, number 13, fired up about it. Paranagua trying to get Florida State to keep on going. They give the point to UCLA. Florida State asking for a touch off the block, but nobody saw it. None of the lines people, the down ref, nobody. So they switch sides. UCLA is getting closer and closer to a national title. Megan McNamara asking the up referee to check that ball mark. But he's certain. Over on the right side of your screen, court two is just two points away from sealing the national championship for UCLA. Lily Justine and Sarah Sponsel 
They pushed UCLA to this championship match. Can they finish it off? Swing is wide. This is dual point for UCLA. One point away from a national championship. Florida State stays alive. But all UCLA needs to do right here is focus on their first contact and get a good, strong, aggressive side out. They have a little cushion. Still championship point for UCLA. Sponsel setting up Lily Justine down the line and wide point for Florida State. Wow, huge aggressive swing, just missing wide. You see she goes all in one centimeter wide. I like the aggressive swing though. Still championship point here on court two. And it's blocked. Katie Horton, huge block move at the net to stay alive. Championship point on courts one and two. UCLA just one point away from a national title. Florida State keeping it alive on court one. Court two, putting it away, and UCLA has its first ever Beach Volleyball National Championship. UCLA survived the elimination bracket. Their twos were the one that pushed them to the championship, and now their twos bring home the title. On this final day, Lily Justine and Sarah Sponsel, two huge victories for UCLA Beach Volleyball. An outstanding season for Florida State. They went the entire way through the winner's bracket. Brooke Niles and her Seminoles all in. They showed it on every point, but the last point going to the Bruins. So impressed by what Florida State was able to do, stay undefeated in that winner's bracket, and then UCLA just came out a little too strong in that final for them. UCLA came in as the number one seed. Stein Metzger says he wasn't worried about his team being overconfident. He knew that they could come in and get the job done, and they certainly did, taking home their first ever Beach Volleyball National Championship. Let's send it down to Cameron. Well, congratulations, Coach. First NCAA title for Beach Volleyball at UCLA. What does this one mean to you? Uh, it means a ton. I mean, we've been working really hard towards this, just like everyone else, but what's incredible is how tough this field was this year. Every game was a knockdown battle down to the end. This was no exception. We had to really fight for this one going to the losers early and just makes it that much sweeter. Well, you mentioned the losers bracket. You were so gritty coming back from that. So what does that say about this team? Oh, this team has been doing that all year. Like we get beat down by a really good team and when we didn't show up and we just knew that we had to take it within ourselves to just play better, be aggressive, be the better ball control team. Hey, we're smaller than everyone. Elise Sapia, one of your seniors just held the trophy. What has she meant to this program? Oh God. Well, we call her the grandma because she's our one senior, um, but she has just been the rock and the foundation for this program. She's our team leader. We don't really have captains, but she just assumed the role naturally. The whole team gravitates towards her, and she's just Mrs. Positivity. She's a little engine that could. All right. Well, congrats, Coach, and I'm going to send it on over to Holly Rowe. What is going on? because they cannot quit celebrating over here. They've got the trophy in their arms. You guys are the first team in history to come from the elimination bracket. You had to play two more matches. The odds are against you. What was the ability to get this done today? I think that just shows how strong and tough this team is. We've faced adversity our entire season with injuries and losses. And I just think that this shows we have a special group of girls and we all, we all wanted it so much. We eat, slept, and breathed it. Like, we were just... 100% so all in and 
It just feels amazing. I can't even describe it. It is a sisterhood, such close teammates, but to win it with your actual sister, how have you guys come together? Oh, they're coming together. <laughs> so cute. How is it to come together and win this side by side? I can't even explain the feeling right now. I mean, when times got tough, we would just lock eyes and we knew, we knew that we could do it, our team could do it, and I'm just so happy. All right, guys, thank you so much. UCLA has its first ever beach volleyball national championship. It came down to the twos. Lily Justine and Sarah Sponsel getting it done. The title will go home to UCLA. Stein Metzger and his crew surviving the elimination bracket to take home the biggest trophy on the beach.